It's not every day that Google makes its own WordPress plugin. The reason they've done it is because they really want publishers to create content in this new format that kind of replicates what an Instagram story or a TikTok video is. They're short, snackable content of between five and 30 pages of just showing information in a very quick to get kind of uh, vertical format. And when you see this happening, Google is saying, we're going to put this format in Google search and we want it a lot more, but not many people have made comment content in this format before. And so the situation that we're about to have as creators is Google is going to open up this format, start displaying it on the SERPs, and there's no competition. <laughs> so we're really excited about this new plugin. We wanna show you exactly how to implement it on your site. The concept of Google Web Stories isn't exactly new. Um, these have been around since about 2018, but up until now, they've required some coding knowledge. You had to know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript just to be able to implement these on your site. Not to mention, you had to properly mark them up with schema. Um, and now, Google has created their own plugin, and that should tell us something. And so for the last couple of years, some sites have been using these, but given that there's so few of them, Google just hasn't been able to push them. Now, what we, the, the reason Google needs these is because of these new forms of content, these stories. We're seeing them all over. We're seeing them on Facebook. Instagram is using stories a lot. Um, TikTok basically is stories. We're, we're starting to see Google push it on YouTube with their YouTube stories. Um, this, again, this snackable, these little pieces of content, Google needs to put something like this out on the web, out on the SERPs itself, to help stay relevant in an age of stories, of small snackable content. So Google wants to push this and they've created this plugin so that we'll create the content so that they can push it. Um, it's time to take notice. Okay, so this is exactly how it works. So first of all, you can go in our description, we're gonna have a link to where you can actually get the WordPress plugin um, to put on your, on your site. It's really easy to use. It hardly needs a tutorial, but there were a few things that we do wanna show you. So we made these for a website that we have called workprep.com. This is actually our first reveal of workprep.com because it only has, has 11 blog posts on there. <laughs> we were gonna do something big on this site and we just didn't get around to it, but we wrote, our writers wrote 11 blog posts a year ago. The site has, has 8,000 page views a month now, yeah. just from 11 blog posts. That's pretty cool. Anyway, so we started noticing, we're like, hey, we have this site that's actually getting traffic. Um, so we're gonna make a couple web stories about this. So for example, I made this one of, is law school worth the cost? Now doing this is really simple. You go in WordPress over to your stories that will be here once you've um, activated the plugin and you can just go to add new story. And then you, you're simply given a blank template and you can put a picture on it. These are all the, the pictures you already have in your media library. And so since we had written about being an attorney, we had some pictures. And so you can simply drag and drop them onto the canvas. And then you grab your text and you can put text in there and change the size of it and links and et cetera. And then, whoops, make it end. Okay, and then you can duplicate this page or create a new page. Here are all the pages I've created. Now a web story has to be at least five pages long and as many as 30 pages long. Um, this one's a little short at five. I'm gonna wanna add more things to it. Um, now you can have links. For example, this is a link in here. You can link to other things in your story, but it really wants it to be complete content. We need to talk about that in a second. Then when I'm done creating it, I simply click publish, or in this case, update, because it's already published. I have my title right here. It's done, that's it. I could make a web story in 15, 20 minutes. You could do it. And you can embed it in your post or just have it as a standalone story on your site. Yeah, let me show you what that looks like. So um, to, to be really clear, Jim said you can do it all within the, within the, the plugin. I mean, I made this story that you can see here. I made it yesterday. I'd never seen the plugin before yesterday. Um, 
I, I created this story all 100% within the plugin. I just used photos that I brought from outside. And that was it, and it looks pretty. And you can see how it looks as a standalone page. But then I went ahead and I embedded it in a blog post. Um, once you have this app, or this uh, plugin, I should say, um, installed on your WordPress site, then it's just a Gutenberg block, right? So when you create a new block for a new piece of content, you select web story and you just enter the URL for your web story and there it is embedded. Now, Google has given us some, some guidelines, right? Um, Jim mentioned that it has to be a complete piece of content. In order for these web stories to, not to exist, right? They, you can put them on your website however you want to, but in order for Google to want to show them, and therefore um, promote your content, they need to be a few things. One is complete. And so um, if your web story requires the user to click through to another piece of content to get, or to get something that's essential um, to, to fulfill the content, that's, that's a negative for Google. Um, if they have more than one link to something else or attachment per page. So Jim mentioned that those stories, you know, it's, it's multiple like tiles. Each one of those is considered a page. One link per page, that's Google's guideline. And when it comes to affiliate links, you can link to affiliate programs from within a story, but they recommend only one affiliate link for the whole story. So if you're doing a, you know, 21 best camping products, right. you only get one link. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not ideal. And the completeness also has me concerned. It does. Because these are embeddable. Um, you can take a story from another website and embed it on a different website, the whole story. And so the question that we have is, um, how is Google going to use this? Is this really just about Google getting us to create content for them that they display and give us very little benefit? Well, it's possible. If they were to display the whole story on the SERP, we may not get a whole lot out of it. What we've seen so far, the one that we can find, it was it was just a link to the creator's website and you saw the whole story right there. You were browsing on their website. It definitely has the potential for Google to abuse uh, their power and to take our content. But either way, I'm really excited about the potential here. Um, I think it's a cool format for learning. I think it's something that, um, Google users uh, would want to see just a quick way to get information. It's great for publishers because it's easy to create and there's gonna be like no competition as this starts to get rolled out in the SERPs. Now, could it be that two years from now we look back in, on that and we're like, oh yeah, that was a funny experiment, it meant never really amounted to anything? Sure, it's fun, it could be. But I think the fact that Google has showed sustained interest in this project over years and is now ramping up more, displaying it in the SERPs and giving us tools to do it, signifies to me that this is something that we want to jump on while the competition is low. Yeah. The way we're going to use it in our company is we're going to go make about 10 web stories for each of our sites because why not? It's so easy um, and I do like the potential of it. And we'll see, maybe Google abuses it, maybe they don't do anything, maybe it's a massive source of traffic with low competition when these things roll out. Exactly, and here's the thing. You might, again, you might be concerned, ah, Google's just gonna take my story, put it out there on the SERP, and not send me traffic. And that is a possibility. Um, is that worse than not being seen at all? Right, can we build a brand here that people recognize because it's showing up in stories and get some of that traffic, but also use it to build credibility. Here's the other thing. If it doesn't work, if this whole thing is a flop, Google's stealing from us, just delete your story, right? Just take it down. Um, Jim mentioned that they're embeddable on other sites. I, I told you that you can go and you can, um, you know, create a Gutenberg block that links to a story. You can link to any story and embed it on your site. But here's the kicker, you're linking to it on their site. You're embedding it from their site. If they delete it, it's gone. So you still get to control your content. You can still um, take it down. If you, you can still have an affiliate link in there, you can Absolutely. have an ad in there. Um, so it's monetizable, even if it doesn't result in clicks to other content. And think about how people use infographics today. People use infographics again to build brand awareness and hopefully link back to your website. And those get shared all over the internet. 
stories could be used in the same way. These could be shared all over the internet, export, um, Im, you know, embedded on multiple people's websites. If you do a really good job and make a story that multiple people would want to embed. So we talk about how stats get links. What if you had a great story that had some statistics in a field that, and it's all, um, um, you know, original content, original research you've put together, and then put that into a story that people can embed on their websites, that is potentially a very big opportunity, um, kind of like, you know, the, the infographic strategy of, of today.